In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a small rock wall for a raised bed. I'm in the process of redoing this whole bed here. It was done about 15 years ago. It's on quite a slope, so I've got about a 45 degree slope here. A pathway running here that goes around the corner, continues up here. The rock wall here helps me raise this up so that the slope is not quite so steep. So the rock wall is important to me. But over the years, it's crumbled down. And to be honest, when I built this wall, it was done in a bit of a hurry. And I did make some mistakes in building it. And that's really why it's crumbled. I have other rock walls on the property that have been in place for 12 years and they're still completely intact. I know that if I rebuild this wall, it'll be much better. I'm going to replace the whole stone wall here to my left and I'm going to extend it a little farther on my right here. But in this video, I'll just show you how to do a small section of a wall. Once you understand how to build a wall that's this big, you can build it as long as you want. It's just more work and just takes more rock. Step one is to remove the rocks I have so I have a clean slate to start the new wall. I don't really have to show you how to do that. I'll come back in a half hour when I'm ready to start the new wall. So I've been working on the wall a little bit, taking away the soil that I don't want. This is where my, my rock wall will go. The rocks are about 10 inches wide, and I'm going to lay them on a fairly flat surface, and I leave about a two inch gap behind them. That's easier than pushing the rocks up against the soil. You can't really get a good fit by doing that. So leave a two inch gap, figure that the rocks are going to go here, that takes me out to about here, and make sure that this pathway is, is big enough. So once I've got this wall taken care of, I take away the excess soil because I want to see where the level of the path is. And I, I rake it so this is flat. So this will be the final path that I have here. Now we're going to do a dry stack wall, which means that there's no mortar involved. We're just going to take a bunch of rocks and set them on top of each other. And the weight of the rocks is what holds them in place. Now I'm in zone five. We get very cold in the winter. So we get a lot of frost heaving in the winter and that's what moves these rock walls. So we have to make sure that the rocks are all stable and that the soil doesn't move it too much. So we do want to make sure that all this soil along here is compacted really well. We want the wall to taper into the wall a bit. Okay, we don't want things leaning out. We want them leaning in. I also like to take this first row of rocks and submerse it a little bit, just an inch or two. So that's the next thing I'll do is I'll prep this so the rocks are a little lower. And I do that with a shovel. I just come out here and say, okay, the rocks are going to be approximately here. And I dig out a little more soil, an inch and a half to two inches, but I taper this. So the front part is higher than the back part. So right under the rocks, it's actually sloped to go into the hill. That will prevent things from falling out. Okay. Now you might come along with a trowel and just clean it up a little bit. You don't have to worry too much to make it level here. You'll see why in a minute. Now I look at the height that I need and I went end up with rocks about this high. And ideally you do it so that you have two courses of rocks, two layers of rocks. Making a wall with two is much easier than making a wall with three layers of rocks. It's much easier to keep them stable. The best option is one layer of rock. And if I had a lot of really large rocks, I could do it one layer, but this is just too much. I, the rocks would have to be this big, really heavy, and I just don't have those kind of rocks on my property. So I'm gonna have to do two layers. The final hill here will go down a little bit, but I'm looking to put rocks about this high. But what I've tried to find is lots of rocks with a flat surface. When I put a rock here, it's sitting on flat soil. The second rock has to sit on top of it. If the first rock is round like this, it's really hard to put anything on top. If I take this one here, which has a flat bottom, and I try to put it on top here, it's not stable. Okay, that will just never hold. So I try to put the rock at the bottom that is, has a flat surface. Now this one here is a little flatter, but it's sloped away from the hill. So if I put a rock on top, it's going to tend to fall away from the hill, which means my rock wall will collapse again. But what I can do with this rock is turn it around. 
if the slope is going towards the hill and I put this rock on top, this is still not a great fit. But at least this way it's not going to fall away. It's going to fall into the hill. And since there will be soil back here when I'm finished, the soil will hold it in place. So this is a much more stable way to put the rock. Now if I adjust this rock by putting some soil underneath to raise the back end so this is a little more level, but it will still slope towards the soil. Now when I put something on top, it tends to sit there much better. It's still a bit wobbly, and I don't really want to see that. If I have this on a rock wall, it's probably going to collapse. I'm also constantly looking at the rock to make sure that the front edge is where I want it. If I start going in the wrong direction, if I come out too much or go in too much, I have to adjust this. So each time I put down a rock, I adjust the angle a little bit so that the front of it is heading the direction I want. The other thing is rock walls work better if you take the heavier rocks and put them on the bottom and then work your way up to smaller rocks on top. I built this rock wall about 15 years ago and it holds up my sun garden from sliding down a steep hill. To make the rock wall very stable it's important to place each rock above the crack joining the two rocks below it. This is easiest seen in a brick wall. You'll notice that each brick straddles the two bricks below it so that there's no vertical crack running straight up and down. Each space between the bricks is covered by a brick above and below it. You need to do the same thing on a rock wall. If you have a look at the rocks in this wall, I followed that principle in most cases. Each rock sits on two rocks below it and covers that weak point which is the crack between them. Most of the rocks in this wall follow that principle. But you'll notice this one spot where I didn't follow that. There's a vertical crack running right from the top to the bottom. When you're using field stone that are all different sizes, sometimes you just can't help putting that into your wall. But as much as possible, try to avoid that kind of a situation. It does become the weak point of the wall. So I have part of the wall finished here. Prep the bottom so it's sloped a bit towards the hill. So the first thing I do is I run the bottom course out, three or four rocks. Then I'll come back and do the second course, cover that same rock, and then move on like that. You could do the bottom course all the way, but I kind of like doing it in stages. So now I need a rock that's flat topped, about that high. Use your fingers, that's your measuring stick. It's not that exact. Now I gotta go find a rock. Eh, when, this one's not too bad. About the same height. I think I can make it work. It's heavy enough, it's stable. Should be okay. It's gonna be a little tricky to cover this. That'd be a challenge here, but for now that looks good. Let's see if we can find another one. You can see I turn it several times. Most of these rocks have a top and bottom and four sides, so there's a potential of six different ways of putting this in. And you can put them up vertically too. Sometimes this is the best way to put the rock in. Gives you a nice stable surface here. But in this spot, I think I will go with something like this. Uh, this isn't too bad, but this is higher than the front, and we never want to have that. But I think the fit is good. We're going to dig out the back a bit, so it slopes a bit more. Now, it slopes into the hill. That's better. If we put something on top, it's not going to fall this way, it'll go into the hill. Now this rock is, looks like it's flat, but it's very sloped here, so it's got a big ball here. This side's pretty flat, but when I put it down, it, it wobbles a lot. It's not a great fit here. I think it's going to give me trouble. I think I will reject it for now. 
That might, that might do the trick. It's a bit higher than this one, so we may have to lower it. Let's leave it for now and see how this goes. So let's now come back and do the second course. So we want a height of about here. We have extra soil on here from all the digging we did. So we only need to go up about this high, about level with this. That's a bit high there. Maybe it'll be fit better over there. See that, that's the right height. But now we got crack here and crack here, which we don't want. So that one, that one doesn't work. Sometimes it's not easy to find the right rock. And as you can tell, I didn't rehearse this. I'm just picking rocks the way I normally would. That's not bad. A little high, but we do want to come up a bit. So, and the cracks here, which is good. And then we can put something here. It's a little wobbly. But again, the wall, well, that's better right there. Just moved it a little bit. It's really good. By the time we put this one in, it'll hold it a bit. Let's see if we can put this long one in here. Yeah, this one has a funny bottom too, so. Well, it's not bad there. Not bad. Not perfect, but it's pretty stable like that. This forms a, a bit of a V here, so soil might come through here, but I'll show you what we do for that. That looks pretty good. Now we want one about like this, so we cover the crack. That looks like it just might fit perfect. No, it doesn't look good, it doesn't look good like that. Hey, you want them to fit, you also want them to look good. That looks really good, I think. Now comes the tricky part. This isn't really flat here. It's kind of sloped down. This is higher. It's a really weird spot. So I need a weird rock. That's actually not too bad. Not perfect, but it's not too bad. Check the height. Check the direction you're going. Everything looks good. Fairly stable. This one, this one's not stable yet. So we got to fix this one before we can put this one in. It's still wobbling. There we go, that's better. Now that's sturdy. By lowering a little bit, it just sits really good now. That one sits pretty good. Should be able to get something over top of this. I have a last look, see if I want to change anything. They look pretty good. So let's do some backfilling. Alright, that looks pretty good. Now I have a space here that this kind of comes down and this is curved and we got to kind of have a low spot here. So if the soil or the mulch gets a little too high, it'll come over here. So one thing you can do is just throw in another rock there. A little bigger would be work better. There we go. Once the plants are growing over that, you won't even see it, but it's just enough to keep the soil from running away. That's really all there is to building the rock wall. Just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again until you get to the other end. This is pretty stable. I've built several of these that have been up for about 12 years, so this will last quite a long time.